Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com, faced with six Chardonnays. Um, for some people, that's a bit of a, um, an experience that they're not really looking forward to. But to be honest, uh, Chardonnay has been a fashion victim. It's enjoyed the heights of fashion in the 90s and early noughties and has fallen out of fashion. But the good wines have always been the good wines and hopefully we've got some good wines here. Uh, what have we got? Here we've got something from Southern France, we've got three Burgundies and we've got a couple of Chileans. Without further ado, let's dig into Paul Mass, uh, Chardonnay 2010, um, Chardonnay de Coudeval Pédoc. Well, this smells like clean, fresh. Um, it, it, I've looked on the back of the label and it says it's got a bit of oak in there, but it feels like it's, it's really pretty much the pure fruit. Uh, so you're getting a little bit of the hazelnut character, a little bit of the, uh, um, the peach, but it's more on that very ripe citrus edge. So it feels like it's, uh, yes, it's come from southern France, which is warm, but it feels like it's come from a cool bit of southern France. France. So um, cool bit of warm region. Pretty decent straight down the line Chardonnay. Uh, it's got a bit of weight and presence. Chardonnay should have that. Um, and uh, in terms of fruit flavours, it's not gone over the top. Yes, there's a bit of something slightly tropical like pineapple, but for the main part, it's on the apple -y, citrus, maybe verging on the apricot. A uh, little bit of nuttiness from the oak aging, bit of oak aging, but it's not nowhere near dominant in, in the wine. Tasty enough, not great, but um, a second glass type of wine, sort of a second slurp. Okay, not remarkable, but okay. Okay, we're in Burgundy now for the next three. So the first one that we've got is uh, Le Jadeau, uh, Marcenet. I think we're moving, yeah, we're moving from north to south in Burgundy. So Marcenet, uh, let's have a, have, a, have a whirl of the, the Jadeau Marcenet, which is usually pretty decent. Yeah, and what's good about this one, it's got what I call the life beyond fruit. It's got some of the, uh, the, the quite, it feels like a quite a round, ample wine, but reining it in, it feels like there's going to be this backbone of acidity. There's some nice, nutty, ever so slightly toasty, sulfury edges going on here. And, um, yeah, it feels like it's going to have the complexity. Um, I mean, how much is it? 16 quid? I mean, burgundy at that price uh, can be a bit boring, but this feels like it's going to have quite a bit of personality. And it does. Pretty decent wine, that. Um, uh, what's good about it is, as I say, this life beyond fruit. Uh, yes, there's the, 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 the plushness uh, bit there, but then just when you think it's, it's going to be just like a bit, a bit of a sort of like a solid, flat, fat bimbo, uh, then this fine edge comes through. So you're getting the mineral, you're getting that uh, nutty, sulfury edge, which I like, and um, um, which is, is a sign of, of the way in which the, the wine has, uh, uh, has been aged in oak. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the, you can pay quite a bit more for Burgundy and not get that type of uh, poise, quality and uh, high cheekboned character. I like that a lot. Let's try the next Burgundy, which is uh, Mercure. Um, Provinage from De Domaine Menon. Provinage is a very, um, I, I, th I think rather than try and explain it, I'll put a link on the, on the, uh, uh, on the video and also on, on the website so you can find out what it is. But basically it's something that people do when they're, when they're, growing, uh, they're growing their vines. But Mercure, um, so we've gone from the Cote d'Or with uh, Marcenet, we're now in the Cote Chalonnaise with Mercure, so a bit further south. Now it's funny, it's like um, a fatter, oilier version of the one before, but without maybe the class. Uh, it feels like it's going to be more on that pineapple chunk. You know, I, I can't remember whether they uh, still do cling peaches in that, uh, that, uh, that slightly gloopy juice. There's a little bit of that there, but just when you think it's going to go a bit too fat, uh, there is a little bit of restraint. But it does feel like it's going to be a uh, less classy wine than the Marcinet, but um, let's see whether it's enjoyable. And there is a nice bit of mealy, leasy nuttiness, a um, bit of toasted bread in there. Uh, yes, quite rich fruit. I'd have preferred a little bit more freshness and acidity. I'd have, maybe I'd have picked up that a little sooner. But um, uh, it feels, it, it, it's okay. It's slightly shamed by the class of the, uh, uh, of the Jadot, but um, decent enough drink. And uh, second, maybe even a small, second and a half glass wine, maybe. Okay, now, uh, Burgundy number three, Michel Picard. Puy Fouissé, 2008. So we're uh, just a bit above Beaujolais. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the Maconnet, um, where of which Puy Fouissé is the, uh, uh, the, the classiest appellation in theory. Let's see whether it is in practice. 
Now this feels like it's going to be fleshier still. Um, if yeah, it, it, it's there's almost like a, a, a for me the Maconay is is a, is a good place for people who've been brought up on New World Chardonnay to uh, to get to grips with Burgundy. This feels like it's maybe a little bit uh, too much on the New World style. It feels it gets like it's going to be quite big, even oily. And um, I if I, I think if I'd had that without knowing where it was, I would have probably thought it was from somewhere uh, not Burgundy. Oh, it's almost just a bit too rich and ripe for its own good. Uh, to be honest, if I'd had that uh, blind, I'm not sure whether I'd have put it in Burgundy. It's got this quite exotic, almost on the tropical fruit edge, uh, those, those bits of peach and pineapple, rather than something sleeker and more elegant. And that oak is just a little bit too obvious. It's okay, but um, I, not as good as the Mercury, and nowhere near as good as the, as the Jadot. Hey, I prefer my wines a little bit sleeker than that. Let's see whether we get some sleekness in chilli. A uh, couple of Chileans here. Uh, first one is Irasuri's Wild Ferment Chardonnay 2009 from Casablanca. Yes, from Casablanca. What does wild ferment mean? Well, um, you can, if, you, if you're making wine, you can add yeast. You can add cultured yeast to, uh, to make sure that your fermentation goes through um, pretty successfully. Or you can let nature take its, uh, uh, yeah, take its time and, and just do it at its own leisurely pace. It's more risky, but uh, the theory is, and in practice, uh, for me personally, it seems to be, that you get more interesting wines as a result of it. Let's see whether this is interesting. It's almost as if there are two wines here. There's a quite rich one, uh, and then there's a quite sleek one. There's a, so the sleekness, I get this citrus and, uh, and green apple, but then you get this more uh, uh, richer, honeyed, toasty, nutty, um, yeah, verging on, again, on the tropical fruit edge. I don't know whether there are two different batches that they've uh, blended together, one that's got ripeness, one that's got acidity, and at the moment, they, certainly from the smell, maybe not hanging together as they should. But let's give it a whirl and see, uh, and see how it tastes. I like that, yeah, um, and um, I, I still get the, the feeling that there are two, two wines that need to knit together um, more fully, but uh, to be honest, my experience with uh, New World Chardonnay is that um, you, you taste it first out of the bottle and you think, oh, it's a bit, bit vulgar and disjointed, and then you give it a few hours to calm down, and uh, uh, the good ones uh, actually do, uh, do uh, develop a sense of decorum, shall we just put it that way. This feels like it's got the decorum uh, anyway, and just those, those fatter, fleshier edges, the creamy edge from, from uh, the oak ageing, feels like they're going to calm down a bit, and uh, there's going to be this seam of um, acidity running through it, keeping it all fresh. Don't notice too much um, soil character there, don't notice too much mineral edge, um, but it feels like a quite a nice, sleek wine. Decent, yeah, nice drink. Not great, but nice drink. Let's see how we go on with the final one. Donna Dominga, which is uh, a label from uh, Casa Silva, and this is their Founders Reserve Gran Reserva Chardonnay. I do wish people didn't use terms like Gran Reserva. It doesn't mean anything on a wine like this. It just means like Cuvée Cajones or something like that. It means I've, I've, we've pulled the stops out um, and uh, tried to make a, a good wine. The problem is when you find it, the uh, Grand Reserve isn't their top wine, and then you think, okay, well, what does Grand Reserve really mean? I'll shut up and sniff. It smells tight, it smells lean, it smells like it's got this uh, citrusy, um, yeah, grapefruit in particular character coming through. Um, I think, is it higher alcohol than the, uh, yeah, it's higher alcohol than the uh, Erasuris. This is 13.5% and the Dona Dominguez 14%. Uh, but it feels like it's going to be fresher. Uh, I don't know whether they've, um, it, it's, it's use of oak that, uh, that they've, uh, uh, they, they've, they've done here. They they've, doesn't feel like they've used as much, if any at all. Let's have a, does it see? No, no, it doesn't say on the back. Uh, but it feels like they, yeah, it feels like it's going to be a fresher. Um, is it going to be richer? Let's see. Well, the richness it's getting there is this toasty oatmeal type of character from the aging on the yeasty sludge left after fermentation, and uh, rather than a, an out and out oakiness. Uh, not that the Erasuris was oaky, but um, certainly it showed its oak a little bit more than here. Uh, to be honest, the fruit flavours that you're you're getting coming through, it smelts like it was going to be quite sleek, but then. You get this rich peachy build-up, and I almost wish that there was a little bit of that uh, uh, more apple citrus edge uh, that was uh, that I could smell, but uh, doesn't seem to be uh, coming through at the moment. Although, as I said with the Erasmus, I'm going to it, give it a chance to calm down, see if that, uh, see if those uh, richer edges do recede into the background and allow a little bit more of the sleekness to come through. Um, I prefer the Erasuris of, of those two at the moment, but uh, for me the Marcinet from Jadot was the class act, and uh, that's the one I'll be hoovering up tonight. See you soon.